What's up, everybody? It's Priyon Joni. So as I'm getting ready for my trip to Germany, I wanted to get another video out for you guys. So today we're going to do episode two of Audio Cables for Beginners. For today's video, I was asked to explain the difference between balanced signals versus unbalanced signals. We're going to go over the benefits of one over the other, how to know if your cable is capable of a balanced signal, and how to make sure that your entire signal path is actually running as a balanced signal. But before I do that, DJs, let me ask you, where do you guys get your music from? Do you still subscribe to a promo CD service? Do you rip it from YouTube, SoundCloud, or even Spotify? You can always tell when music is ripped because it doesn't sound as good when it's loud at the club. What you need is direct music service. DMS is an online music database made for the working DJ and mix artists. With several genres, edits, and a variety of remixes, DMS has everything you need to curate your own style with your playlist. And what's even better is they have their own mobile app. You can listen to the songs available when you're not at home. And when you put songs on your wish list, it'll be ready for you on your Dropbox folder when you get home. It's fast, easy, and saves you time. Go to directmusicservice.com today. Now back to the video. So on the back of your DJ mixer or your controller, you might see your master output might have two kinds. You might see an RCA output and you might see an XLR output. Sometimes your RCA output might even be marked and says unbalanced. Other controllers, like I think a Native Instruments S4, has quarter inch outputs and it's marked balanced. So what does all that mean? So first, let's explain the difference between an unbalanced signal and a balanced signal. In a regular unbalanced signal path, there are two wires. There's a ground and there's a signal carrier negative and positive. It's pretty straightforward. The signal carrier carries the signal and then the other wire serves as the ground. It's a basic, simple circuit. Basically, every single RCA wire will create an unbalanced signal path. See, what happens in an unbalanced signal path, like an RCA wire, is that the longer you make the wire, the more susceptible it is to high frequency interference. Because what happens is when you have a super, super long unbalanced cable, it becomes an antenna for radio frequencies all around the room. Now there are ways to reduce the interference, like by putting a ferrite choke, but generally unbalanced signal paths are great for short distances, like the distance between a CDJ to your DJ mixer. Three feet to six feet, maybe even 10 feet is totally fine. Some experts say don't go over 15 feet, while others say 25 feet. But the rule of thumb is, keep it as short as possible. And another example of an unbalanced signal is a guitar cable or a line out out of a keyboard. For most electric guitars, you use a quarter inch cable. Later on in the video, I'll explain to you guys how to tell the difference between an unbalanced quarter inch cable versus a balanced capable cable. But because a guitar cable is unbalanced, it's best to keep it as short as possible. Electric guitar signals are usually sensitive to noise, so keeping the cable as short as possible is always the best idea. Not to mention, the longer the cable goes, the more signal degradation happens, and also the reduction of signal to noise ratio. So in a nutshell, keep your cables in an unbalanced signal path as short as reasonably possible. Now, what does a balanced signal path mean? So let's take a cable that's generally used for a balanced signal path, which is the XLR cable. See, unlike an RCA cable that only has two wires, a signal carrier, and a ground, when you look at an XLR cable, there's actually three prongs on it, three holes on the female end. What that means is inside this cable, there are actually three wires as opposed to two. There are two signal carriers and one ground. So why are there two signal carriers? The way it works is in order for a signal path to be completely balanced, the source has to output a balanced signal. A microphone by default is a balanced source and the receiving end has to be a balanced input. Usually anything XLR is assumed to be a balanced input. The reason why there's two signal carriers is one of the signal carriers, the polarity is inversed. That means the way the waveforms are going through the wire is turned upside down. And it goes through the wire just like that. And when it gets to the other end, it inverses itself again back to normal. See, the reason why you do that is so that if you receive any interference through your cable, when the signal is inversed at the other end again, the interference that you get through the cable is actually canceled out. Because of that, in a balanced signal path, you get a stronger signal, 
reduce noise caused by interference, and most importantly, you can run your cables way longer. Now, when I'm searching through YouTube and watching other videos about balanced versus unbalanced signals, a lot of people like to call the XLR cable a balanced cable. See, the cable itself is not inherently balanced. There's more than one use for a cable with two signal carriers, which I'll explain later in the video. But in order for a signal path to be balanced, the source has to output a balanced signal. The cable has to be the type that can carry two signal carriers and one ground. And the receiving end has to be one that can input a balanced signal. Typically, it's assumed that when you're plugging something from XLR to XLR, the signal path is going to be balanced. But what if it's not XLR? An RCA, once again, by default, will never be a balanced signal path. But when it comes to quarter inch, there are two kinds. Earlier, we showed you the guitar cable, which is an unbalanced quarter inch cable. But there's also such thing as a quarter inch cable that is capable of a balanced signal path. So this is the guitar quarter inch cable. The signal path will always be unbalanced. Now this is a balanced capable quarter inch cable. The way you tell the difference is actually looking at the tips. A quarter inch cable that is unbalanced will have a tip and a sleeve, TS for short. It has one black ring around it. A quarter inch cable that has two black rings around it has a tip, a ring, and a sleeve, TRS for short. There are three cables inside this cable, the two signal carriers and the ground. When you see a quarter inch output on a device and it's marked balanced, that means it's capable of taking a TRS quarter inch cable and doing a balanced signal path. But in order for the entire signal path to be balanced, the receiving end must be also marked a balanced input. Some of you guys might ask, can you use a TS quarter inch cable to plug from a quarter inch output source that is balanced? The answer is yes. However, since you have a cable that is not capable of a balanced signal path, the entire signal path defaults to unbalanced. Conversely, if you have an audio source that has an unbalanced quarter inch output and you use a TRS quarter inch cable, what happens? Well, since the source is unbalanced, it doesn't matter if you're using a TRS. The entire signal path defaults to unbalanced. So in order for an entire signal path to be balanced, that means the source, the cable, and the receiving end all have to be capable of a balanced signal. Some questions people might have, is there such thing as an unbalanced XLR? If you've ever looked at an entry level controller like a DDJ SB3, and you looked at the mic input, which is a quarter inch, it's actually marked unbalanced. So what does that mean? Well, on the microphone end, you might have an XLR. On the other end, you might have an adapter to quarter inch or just have a cable that goes from XLR female to quarter inch male. Now, even if you use a TRS cable to plug into the controller, because the receiving end is unbalanced, that whole signal path is still unbalanced. Because it's unbalanced, keep your cable short. Now, another thing to note, TRS cables are also capable of another type of signal path. So this is the cable end to my headphones. It's an eight inch TRS cable, which you can put a quarter inch TRS adapter on. A headphone cable, just like any TRS cable, has three wires in it, two signal carriers and a ground. However, instead of inversing one of the signal carriers, the way the two signal carriers work is one is used for regular polarity of your left channel, and the other is used for regular polarity of your right channel. So inside a headphone cable, it's essentially two unbalanced signal paths. Basically inside one headphone cable, it could do the job of two RCA cables. That's why sometimes TRS cables can also be used as extensions to headphones. So does that mean you can use an XLR cable as a headphone cable? Theoretically, yes, you can. There's actually these headphone cables that are XLR on the receiver end and these really rare boutique DJ mixers that have an XLR for your headphones. The reason why some people do that is because the thicker wire gauge of an XLR cable supposedly has more clarity than a regular headphone cable. And something really interesting to note on a lot of new headphones is that they have these detachable cables 
that are mini XLR on the end that connects to the headphones. So in a nutshell, when you have an unbalanced signal source, like a keyboard synthesizer or a guitar or a CDJ, keep the cable length as short as reasonably possible. But when you have a balanced output, like the back of your DJ mixer, the back of your mixing board, and when you have a balanced input, like the back of your amplifiers or the back of your powered speakers, use a cable that is capable of a balanced signal path, like a TRS quarter inch cable or an XLR cable. You'll get more distance and less interference. All right, guys, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. Would love to hear your thoughts or answer any questions you guys might have. And if you like this video, be sure to smash that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. All right, thanks for watching.